The crypto markets have fallen a little bit. Let's find out why. This is your daily debrief. It's the 12th of August. So Bitcoin is just under 59K. ETH, I feel, is struggling a little bit at 2,600. Still remain hopeful that it'll get to 10K this cycle, but it's not really looking really good at the moment. And Solana's at 146. However, there have actually been some things which I did want to put some funds into as part of the 10K to 100K challenge that are not Solana related. And one of them was Sui. And we missed out on that one because, well, we I didn't jump in. But this just... This went up in the last seven days, 50, like 100%. It basically doubled. So this would have been definitely the time to get a little bit of that because, oh, what a sharp sell-off. We'll see if we can cover that another day. But we will be doing as part of the 10K to 100K challenge, other tokens on other blockchains as well, just more of a Solana focus. Anyway, so what is the reason for this crypto dump? So one major thing is the fact that there is right now in the Ukraine, there's a reactor, a nuclear reactor situation. Now, this reactor is currently offline. The incident involves a fire at the base, not at one of the cooling towers. It is not a bombing, nothing to relate to the war, apparently. And based on the available information, there is no imminent risk of a nuclear disaster. Of course, if there were, or if this is untrue, then yeah, markets will be absolutely devastated. So I don't think we have any risk here, but this coming out, you know, maybe this being put on by media, this would have affected the news. So now, as soon as there's a little, little bit more clarification around this, I do expect we can return up a little bit. Invest Answer says we'll probably rebound here based on the models. We'll see how it goes. Now, just remember, I don't want to cover this too many times, but just as a reiteration, on average, this, I don't like this comment here, but on average, BTC peaks 480 days after the halvening. We can't say that because we can see with each cycle, it actually gets deeper and deeper. There are more people that come in, the whales can push it longer, and this will continue to happen. We're at 548 for the last cycle. I do, and we're 113 days in. So I do think 600 or so mean about 490 days, which is the end of 2025. That is ultimately what I was expecting was going to happen. Then I kind of changed the thesis to like mid, just based on other people's analysis. But I think this is far more likely. End of 2025, 2025 is going to be an absolute silly year. I'm so sure of it. It's not financial advice, but it's just going to be silly. It's just, it's going to be pretty much up only for like stocks, real estate in major cities, and of course, like majorly good crypto projects. Now we do have a little bit of news this week with like, this is macro news that comes out from the US, the US inflation, jobless, retail sales, consumer sentiment, all this stuff comes out, which means the markets will be trying to price and stuff that they don't know. So this is certainly not like the best week to trade. It's just, you know, I don't trade anyway. It's just boring to do this, but dollar cost average into these things, or even maybe there are some stink bids that are worthy of going. I don't, I don't expect anything crazy this week, but we'll have to see how it goes. We'll report on it once we have the, have the news. Now let's move on to some WBTC news. If you didn't already know, Meow was part of the WBTC, like, creation many years ago and basically this was just a way to get bitcoin onto ethereum so it could be used as collateral it could be used in DeFi, it could be used in all these different things this is a big blurb we'll have to see how this plays out but right now i'm a little bit hesitant to get some wbtc i think it will be fine of course i don't think there's a dpig risk or anything like that but how it essentially works is bitgo they hold the cust they're the custodian of the bitcoin they're the other custodian and they look after it. I mean, it's a little bit risky, of course, if something happens to BitGo, which that's certainly trust in the space. They are very, very trust in the space, but it's still a little bit risky, right? This is why it is still a good idea to get a little bit of Bitcoin, actual Bitcoin. Now, when we come down, you can see uh, Meow, Meow's got some questions. Who's going to be part of the multi-sig? Will the BTC, BTC ever be used for any purpose, which it shouldn't be? What's the upside for either party? Is it for Tron adoption of WBTC? Because Justin Sun is coming in, I think, wanting to be part of the multi-sig thing so how's it going to how's it going to work with multi-jurisdiction etc 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 like he's just asking for some transparency which is completely fair but personally other than my jlp exposure to wrapped btc if i want btc from now on i'm going to actually have it on the blockchain on the btc blockchain it's just the safest thing this is not meant to fud wrapped btc just to push for transparency but i'm just letting you know that i think that's the kind of the go-to the other thing is i'm not going to aim to accumulate a lot i think it's Far better that we ride up the coins that are going to go 5x from here because Bitcoin won't 5x from here. We ride them up, we take some profits, we buy Bitcoin throughout the bear cycle. That's how I'm kind of foreseeing it. Although every now and then you may win really big in a meme coin and you may want to go and buy $1,000 worth of Bitcoin. In which case, in my opinion, probably better just to buy BTC. So in my opinion, if you want some BTC, probably best just to buy the actual original and only BTC. 
Next bit of news, a little bit of terrible on-chain analysis. Uh, we'll point it out and we'll just go through the FUD. Is Jupiter dumping? Meow, can you comment on the allegations that Jupiter's dumping that we're seeing over Twitter? Basically, a proposed address that was receiving a Jupiter platform fee, which Jupiter does not. Phantom does, uh, BirdEye does, Soulflare, maybe Backpack does. Coinbase Wallet, uh, Asset Swap, Asset Dash Swap, they would. All of these things, which encourage you to use their platform, Step Finance has one as well, they take a percentage of all the swaps and then they can then sell it into USTC or Sol or hold a random meme coin. This one, we don't know who they are. We could probably work it out, but we, we won't bother too much. They've gone and taken their supply and they've sold into USDC. You can see here, this address has $28 million worth of tokens, $26 million worth of USDC. If you're scrolling down, you'll see some people that just go straight in with the accusation without doing any due diligence. So just be mindful of that. I don't think it's going to hurt the dupe price or anything like that, but it's nothing like that. Here's the actual reality. Now, if someone's already asked me for this. They asked me, are you sure you're not taking a little cut? And the thing is, it's all done on a blockchain. And if it's all done on the blockchain, then we can see. We can see it in an instruction. And plus, if it was done, then we would, of course, see that. And as soon as we could see it, someone would have seen it. It would have been proposed on Twitter, and this would have happened over the last few years. So if you're using dupe directly, it's 100% free. If you use Soulflare, Phantom, whatever, for your convenience, there is a fee. Soulfly has a lower fee than Phantom, has a lower fee than Coinbase Wallet, which is why I use it when I want to use it for that purpose. They have an API feature that allows this swap finder to take a percentage. This other person had the same thing, essentially just fighting Jupiter here. And then if we scroll on down, it says, if they take no fees on swaps, how do they make money? And Soju says, we take 2.5% on what our swap partners make. Industry standards, 30%. Also, DCA limit orders, they are 0.1%. So one of the reasons why Jupiter was able to survive is they did a raise for Meteora years ago, and they kind of lived off that. And then I guess they make a small amount from the partners that use their API as well. And that's done maybe company to company. Let's say Phantom makes uh, 50 or 100 million a year, then a small portion of that would go to the Jupiter team for the convenience. Anyway, as all this goes through, essentially uh, it's a Jupiter platform fee is how it was labeled and it's actually a Jupiter wallet fee. And long story short, it was mislabeled and some people just a little bit silly getting away with it. So just clearing it up here in case it jumps onto your timeline. Now the people dumping could be anyone, but it could be BirdEye just as an example. The label, which I can't even see in SoulScan myself, but it's now been changed to partner referral fee account, just so you know. Next bit of news, just a reminder, if you didn't win a patron NFT during Create One, which I didn't, you can still enter this. This will cost you about $15 in gas. Then you have to deposit 10 USDC. You have to go and do these things. And the mystery box is what you're after. We don't have many days left. And there's only 305 people that have actually jumped in. So the odds are not bad. This, I think, is worth doing. This is like proving that you're willing to do a small amount of actionables to support a project. I think this is very worth doing. Even if this was at 1,000, it would still be worthy. And this is really cool. The thing that I like about this the most is there's a barrier to entry. You have to learn a few things. You have to pay a small amount of money in order to to enter something, which means we're not just getting mindless 10,000 bots just going and doing something to try and get an airdrop. This is well worth it. Next bit of news, an explanation on what e-mode caps are. So there's been a lot of questions and I've covered it before, but I want to cover it here in, in a specific segment. However, I will also do another video once the UI kind of improves, a, a video on Camino. So e-mode allows you to go and borrow PYUSD and it's a new way of setting caps on these things. So as an example, if we have a look at this PYUSD, there's $23 million worth of uh, tokens that can be borrowed but you can't just go and borrow them just willy-nilly. You either have to supply Sol or wrapped BTC. And then if we have a look down here, there's a certain amount that you can borrow with having wrapped BTC as collateral and Sol as collateral. And if we come on down, we'll see if you have other assets, any other LSTs or anything else in there, then you will get a fail message. So you will not be able to add the LSTs or non-emote assets into the pool after an emote borrow. So one thing is you have to actually set up a different wallet for this. But it's very worthwhile because like right now I'm borrowing a decent amount of PYUSD. I then swapped it for USDC. I then repaid other debts. I'm borrowing at 1.4%. So when we have a look at the market like this, we come on down, we can see these have been filled. So just remember, if you've got some soul, can't be Jito soul or anything like that, it has to be soul. You go and put it into a new address. Let's say you've got $10,000 worth of soul and you want to go and borrow $3,000 worth of PYUSD. You're borrowing at a rate that's so incredibly low. And if this stays low for like three or four months, that's still giving you a decent amount of money to actually level up with. So I would want to add this to the 10K to 100K challenge when we can. 
However, as soon as these caps actually get released or increased, we often will actually miss out. So what you need to do is you need to go and turn on notifications and make sure you get a ping in Telegram. Next bit of news. So Soulport Tom, he's working on LiveBot. This is a new bonk pad system of launching. For now, all we need to do is this building a database. Just go and comment your wallet below. If you're whale or someone that doesn't want to dox their wallet, you can use a burner here. I would suggest adding a small amount of soul or something to it though. Not completely empty. Next thing to cover, and I have asked my researcher to actually work out which one he thinks is worthwhile by doing them all, working out which one is worthwhile. These airdrops can be done with different things like Galaxy or Zeely, and you can see there's not a lot of participants in them. Archeum, that's clearly been botted crazily, but I do like Archeum, but some of these are worth a jumping into because there's not many people actually participating in them. Now onto meme coins. Saturday and Sunday, all I saw on my feed was just meme coin tags. It was crazy, yet when I looked at these tags, none of them were actually pumping up or there was no real alpha here. So pump.fun, it's a slaughterhouse. So now we're like trying to give you soul in order to actually launch a token. There's been 16,000 tokens launched, 175 actually made to radium and 19 remain above the 69K market cap. So from launch to profitable, 0.12%. This is one reason why, you know, I wanted to cover it, but we just can't. What I suggest you do instead is stake your soul. This is from noon. Have a look at this. Now, obviously one year ago, soul was far more reasonable. I don't even know if it, it was, I guess it was $20. Yeah, about a year ago. $10,000 worth of soul. Without staking today, $77,000. With staking today, $85,000. Plus, potentially the Jito airdrop. If you had some Jito soul, maybe the Sanctum airdrop, maybe you got this this, this, it wouldn't have quite been an extra 10 soul. Maybe if you converted some of your airdrop into soul, it would be. But either way, if you're not staking your soul, you're missing out. It's obvious in hindsight. Don't let it be obvious in hindsight. Do it now. Another reminder here is go and check your wallets. Use airdrop.link. I've done a great video on it. It'll be linked above. Go and check all your wallets for any drift tokens. Go and claim them because you've got four days to actually go and grab them. Otherwise, they're gone. They go back to the DAO and they do with them whatever they want. Now, I'm going to make a new move in my 10K to 100K challenge. It bounced up to maybe almost around 11K. It's dropped down a little bit. That's okay. Like this will take a few months, maybe. I mean, a year is what I said. I don't think it'll take a year though. A lot of these tokens are just showing as unknown, uh, annoyingly in Sona Watch, but we're fine. So we're still over the 10K. The thing that I'm after right now is some Camino. Camino is trying to get to 10 billion TVL. At 10 billion TVL, I'm fairly confident that the actual token itself will do well. And if we have a look at what it is now, obviously the best time to buy it would have been a couple of days ago because you know everything was discounted when it dipped down to like just under two cents. But even still right now, it's four cents. The actual market cap is 41 million. The fully diluted valuation is 417. And the all-time high was about 12 cents. The good thing is it hasn't like done a rocket up yet. They need to get the DAO organized, which they're working on. And all these things, you know, they get out some content. I think this is a, a very worthwhile token to hold. Now, if we have a look at Aave, the biggest competitor out there, remember 41 million and 417 million. Aave's uh, market cap is 1.4 billion and a fully diluted valuation of 1.5. It did have this crazy run up to an insane valuation, which was just silly. We should have sold if you had any. Anything like over 400, I think would have been great. But nevertheless, that is the competition. There are more blockchains. They are older, they're more OG, of course, but that's essentially the competition. That's my thesis on why I'm buying some. So I'm going to go and buy 100 right now. Buy 100, you can buy it like here, or if you're happy with the swap fee, if you're just for like the speed and convenience, you can just jump into Soulflare right here. I'm just going to do it here. That's fine. Just to show you how it's done. And then we'll also set up a DCA. So we cannot do a DCA. By the way, make sure your slippage is appropriate. If it doesn't go through, adjust your slippage. I've got a video on slippage if you need to understand slippage. We'll confirm that. We'll go and buy that. Also, as I said, a DCA. That's what I want to do. Nothing crazy. $100 to buy every like six hours and I'll do 30 orders. My other ones are still operating here. I could probably take this bonk and start staking that bonk as well, which I'll do another day. So start this DCA. That's been created. We should have some Camino tokens in here down there. And then I'm going to go to Camino and we'll go and stake them. So when we stake them, we get more rewards and we will be using Camino in order to jump into some things in the next video I cover on the 10k to 100k challenge. So connect your wallet, cell flare. I'm already generating some points here just by using it. Stake Camino, a few there, just go and stake them. And also once again, go and check all your wallets for any Camino tokens. I don't know when the last day to claim them is. 
but go and check them, claim them, and then decide if you want to sell them, or in my case, go and stake them. The actionables for the day, due to sold PYUSD vault on Camino is 88% plus APY, decent, lock at least 1 million bonk for 12 months with bonk rewards, take part in Infinex's path to patron, deadline's August 16th, comment your soul address in Soulport's Tom's tweet for bonk pad and airdrop actionables deposit into camino's jito soul soul meteor pool you get some met points if you want to do that check airdrop.link video for airdrops just be familiar and just go and just do it this is something that will probably net you hundreds if not thousands of dollars and if you miss out or if you're a little bit late then they expire and you get nothing claim your drift tokens you have four days and check out Fabiano's Galaxy and Zeely airdrop guide. That's all for today. I'll have another video released today on Breakpoint, so make sure you watch that as well.